Thus far, we've only discussed single genes that affect traits. What happens when two different genes affect one trait? Well, let's imagine that two enzymes are responsible for making a flower pigment in plants. And that pathway is some substrate makes some intermediate catalyzed by uh, the pr uh, enzyme that's the product of gene A, and that is also converted by uh, enzyme B into a pigmented P. And so independently, an allele that produces a non-functional A enzyme is recessive, right? Because homozygous dominant and the heterozygote are, are both going to result in pink flowers. But if you have two alleles that are broken, um, then the homozygote recessive is going to give you white flowers. And the same is true with enzyme B, right? That if you have a homozygote dominant or a heterozygote, both of those genotypes are going to give you pink flowers. And it's only if you have the homozygote recessive that you're going to have white flowers. What happens, though, if we cross two heterozygotes? Right, little big A, little bit A, big little blah, big B, little B, times uh, crossed with big A, little A, big B, little B. If these genes were unrelated, right, we know that we would expect some sort of nine to three to three to one phenotype ratios. But let's see if that's the case. So. We'll go ahead and draw our, um, our tree here. Big A, big A, big A, little A, little A, little A. Right, and we know that these are one quarter, one half, and one quarter, and of course all of these are the same, and so our elementary outcomes here are And our probabilities are 1 16th, sorry, 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 quarter, 1 8th, and 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 1 16th. There we go. However, which of these plants have colored flowers and which of them have white flowers? Well, the white ones are there there, 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 and there, right? Because a homozygous recessive in either of these two genes is going to result in a block in this pathway right here. And so if you sum these up, then we see that 9 sixteenths of the progeny are pigmented and 7 sixteenths of the progeny are white. And this ratio is very different than this ratio, right? When genes interact such that we don't see a kind of normal Mendelian, an expected Mendelian ratio, we call this interaction epistasis.
And just like complementation tests, we can even use epistasis to determine if different mutants that affect the same process are in different genes or if they're in the same gene. So let's say that we have two true breeding mutants for the same process. We'll call these mut1 slash mut1, right? One plant that's homozygous for this mutant and the other mutant is homozygous mut2 slash mut2, right? Both of these plants have white flowers. If we cross them and they're the same gene, then the cross will also have white flowers, right? So if that cross has white flowers, that means that these mutants are in the same gene. But if we cross these two plants and they have pigmented flowers, that means that these two mutants are mutants in different genes. And the different observed phenotype ratios like this can actually give you some information about how the genes are interacting. And your textbook goes into some more detail for this. So, this chapter we've discussed traits that are obvious and they're observable. However, especially when we're considering human genetics, Traits are often described in terms of risk factors for disease, for example, an increased chance of heart disease or an increased chance of breast cancer. And so before we leave transmission genetics, we will return to these probabilistic traits with a discussion of conditional probability.